podcast. My name is Olga and I'm coming to you from Toronto, Canada. Uh, this is a podcast about primarily knitting and sourdough baking, but I also talk about any other crafty things I get into and just whatever happens in my life. So welcome. Um, today I have a few things to talk about, um, but not too many. <laughs> so I think this will be short. Uh, I've only been knitting on one thing and um, I've I have a little bit to talk about um, the baking I've done and just whatever's going on has been going on the past couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, not much really. <laughs> um, so I'll start with the knitting. Uh, as you know, I've been working on the no frill sweater uh, that I'm knitting for my friend. Um, I forgot to bring the name of the yarn. I'll put all the notes and all the information is at, in the below the video. So you can find uh, the yarn, the needles, the name of the pattern, the designer, everything. Um, I don't keep too much on Ravelry. Uh, that's not there, <laughs> but sometimes other stuff are. And if there's a direct link to my project on Ravelry, I'll put it there. Um, so yeah, I forgot the name. It's a yarn from Webs. I think the company is Cloudborn Fiber. Uh, and this is their DK weight and it's 100% um, Highland wool. Uh, and I'm striping it with another yarn of theirs that's um, a stock yarn. I think it's 80% merino, 20% uh, nylon or polyester, I can't remember. Um, so anyway, um, like I said last time, this is for my friend. Her birthday is the end of the month. It's probably not going to be ready by then because I'm needing the X to XL or XL. I think 2XL size. Uh, but I'm needing it on a small gauge so that it would be a medium size. So I'm needing on 3.25 needles where the recommended needles are four millimeters. Um, so this is how far I've got so far. <laughs> um, so I'm on the body, I divided the, for the body and sleeves, obviously. <laughs> and um, I think last time I was about somewhere here. I think I haven't started striping yet. Um, so you can see I've got quite a bit done in two weeks. Uh, this is all I've been doing. <laughs> like I wasn't cross-teaching or sewing or knitting on anything else. Just this. I'm kind of sick and tired of it. <laughs> um, that's the problem when you're kind of knitting for somebody with a deadline. Like It's always kind of stressful for me because I don't know 100% if they're going to like it. And then it's always under a deadline. Even if I start early, I'm going to always feel like I want to be done with it. <laughs> And this one I didn't have a chance to start early because it took a while for the yarn to come. So I wish I could stop knitting on it for just a little bit, <laughs> but uh, I really have to get going so that I can at least give it to her at the beginning of February. Um, but yeah, I'm hopeful by her birthday next week, the end of next week, to at least finish most of the body and like half of the arm. So I want to kind of do it at the same time more or less. So once I finish this ball, um, I'm gonna start, I have three more skeins of this yarn, so I'm gonna start on the on the arms at the same time more or less and kind of get to the same point with the stripes, so I have the same amount of stripes on each arm as I have on the body and see how much yarn I have left because I have um, a darker navy blue that um, I would use um, when I'm done with all the skeins of the this yarn. So, and the idea is like, I don't want just the body have some dark blue at the bottom, but no dark blue on the sleeves. I wanted both to have it. Um, so that's why I'm kind of doing it all at the same time. So I think yarn management will become a little bit annoying, but hopefully I'll get it down quickly so it wouldn't last for too long. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, it's nice knitting. It's in the round, the pattern, I've done it before. So I kind of know what I'm doing. and. Even if you haven't done it before, it's a great beginner pattern, especially now I think she, she made new versions. So it used to be like kind of like more Norwegian style where it wasn't very detailed. So it would just say like, oh, decrease 10 stitches in the next round evenly and you have to figure out how to do it yourself. And um, now it's a little, she made it really, really detailed. Uh, so she tells you exactly when to decrease, um, how, so it, it really became a beginner friendly pattern and I highly recommend it. I mean, the sweater always comes out really nice. So um, yeah, if you like like that kind of like very simple sweater, because I think 
Um, at the same time, you could buy something like that, probably for the same price or cheaper without not including your work. Uh, and some people, I think, maybe like knitting um, more kind of like complicated things, something you can't necessarily buy. Um, but if you like knitting simple things uh, and wearing, then that's a great pattern. But I don't think she needs my recommendations. I think everybody knows this pattern. Um, the other knitting uh, is my cardigan. So it's actually, I didn't check before I started recording and then I realized I should be talking about it. Um, it's a pattern from um, a knitty from at least five years ago. Uh, it's also DK weight. Um, I don't really remember much about this pattern except it was really easy and nice to knit. It has really nice cable detail. detail. Uh, the yarn, oh, I think it was something like 40% wool, 60% acrylic or the other way around and um, it still kind of managed to felt. I, I machine washed it and I think it was supposed to be machine washable but it still managed to, I don't know, but it's really warm. Um, I like the heathered color. Uh, it does peel a little bit but I think it might have to do with the fact that I machine washed it. But it still holds nice. It didn't really like um, became smaller or anything like that. Uh, I'll put the name of the pattern and designer on the screen and also put all the information below um, and the only thing I did I made a mistake so the this part here it's actually supposed to be like the the button band it's supposed to be I think um, what do you call it when you knit one row and then like you need in the front and in the back I forgot the name of it <laughs> anyway so it's, it's not supposed to be stocking at it's supposed to be garter right garter so it's supposed to be garter stitch, but I didn't pay attention to the pattern and I just did the neat stitch. So I think it would have been better because you see how I have like those, like it kind of like rolls in. So I think it wouldn't have rolled if I did the garter stitch and I think it would have set a little bit straighter, more neat. Um, but it's still nice. Um, yeah, nice recommend like the cables. So great pattern. Um, so that's all I have for the knitting <laughs> content this, this time around um, with regards to sourdough. So I really wanted to film how I make the 100% sourdough by uh, James Duffy, uh, but I just didn't get to it. It, it kind of requires uh, more work and I just didn't get a chance to do that and also film the process. Uh, so instead I filmed a super easy, simple bread that I make, which is also very healthy. Um, it's a rye bread, so it's primarily rye. There's like a little bit of whole wheat in it. Uh, it's a recipe I got from this Russian, um, Russian speaking, I, I should say, uh, Instagram account. Um, I'll put the name, I think her, her name is, um, I wrote it down just a second. Her name is Ovoynova. Ovoynova. Um, and uh, she has lots, lots, and lots of sourdough recipes, information, techniques, like a lot. Uh, so if you're into it, you should maybe check it. Um, you can always use the translate function. And I think it's, it's good enough for recipes. Uh, I did put the recipe in English down below for you guys, just so you can easily see that because I kind of show you everything anyway, the way I make it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, this is how I make it. It's really easy and you don't really need to do much with it. Just kind of mix stuff, wait, mix, wait, put it in a pan, wait, and then bake it. That's really all there is. Lots of not doing anything. So something to keep in mind with this recipe is that when the temperatures are lower, like now in the winter, it takes about 36 hours for it to be done. So basically from the moment you mix the levine, till you bake it. In the summer, when it's warmer, it takes about half the time. So what I'm doing here, um, I'm basically mixing the starter with water and the rye flour. Then I mix it really, really well. Um, I put a rubber band to see how much the levin has risen. And I just let it sit usually for about 12 hours um, or however long it takes till it doubles in size.
so this is same day after about 12 hours you can see in the background the starter has about doubled and we are ready to mix the dough so first I put some water and then the starter it's really sticky but with a bit of effort you can get it out of the jar <laughs> then I add honey and salt At this point I mix everything really well until it is fully dissolved in the water and then I add the flowers and the sunflower seeds and then I mix everything really well. It's a very sticky dough so it's a little bit hard, hard to mix uh, but I really try to make sure there is no white bits of flour left. This is how the dough looks after 12 hours of proofing. It rises up and there are holes on the top of the dough. I take it out of the bowl, it's really sticky as you can see. So I make sure that the surface that I'm putting it on is very wet. Uh, then I use a scraper to get any bits that are left in the bowl. Once all of the dough is out, I wet my hands and I start shaping the dough. I kind of make, uh, I flatten it a little bit and I make a sort of a rectangle out of it. And then I just uh, pull the sides in so that I create a little log. And then I put it into the pan seam side down. Once the dough is in the pan, I wet my hands again and I smooth the top of the dough um, so that it completely fills the pan. Also, make sure I make sure that the pan is very well oiled and I even put parchment paper at the bottom, just from experience when the bread sticks into the pan and very difficult to get out. So I make sure I do my best to prevent that. So this is how the dough looks like. Before proofing, um, I put um, a plastic bag over the pan with the dough and just let it sit for another six hours. And then I heat up the oven to 460 degrees. And once it's hot, I put the dough in. Um, you can soon see how much it has risen. You can see it's nicely. Um, round on top and there are holes then I put the dough into the oven for 15 minutes at 460 degrees and then I didn't manage to take a video of that but once the 15 minutes pass I lower it to 350 degrees for 45 minutes Ta-da! It is ready! I take it out of the oven and hopefully very easily out of the pan as well and then I let it cool for preferably 24 hours uh, so that the crumb really sets and then I can eat! The last few things I want to talk about was just stuff I've been doing this week um, so first is uh, you probably saw in the clips I put at the beginning, um, I've been doing some cleaning. So I've been watching some, I don't know how it happened, but I somehow came across those accounts. Uh, they seem to be mostly from North Korea. So it's bloggers on YouTube from, not North Korea, sorry, South Korea. <laughs> South Korea. And they, they do a lot of, or like maybe they're from South Korea, but not, not necessarily living there anymore or anyway it doesn't matter um it's really nice because they're kind of like very meditative uh videos they're usually like around 10 minutes they're really popular so maybe maybe everybody already knows about it except me <laughs> uh and um 
there's uh, it's kind of like just daily life and like cooking, cleaning, little things that they're doing, but it's it's shot so so beautifully. It's just really good quality, and there's no talking there, so they just like write things in uh, I guess Korean, and then you can have subtitles. Some of them write in English sometimes as well, um, and, and so yeah, it's just great experience watching them, and they're really inspiring, and they're like so everything is so clean there <laughs> like they really keep their houses super super clean uh, and they kind of show how they do it as well um, so I've been kind of inspired <laughs> to start a little bit cleaning um, I find at this time when like things in the world are like so over the place and it's kind of stressful and we don't know how things gonna go like it's hard to imagine a future right now at least for me because I don't know how things gonna be um, so like knitting is a nice distraction and sort of meditation a way to kind of like not think about it but I feel like I need something more challenging so cleaning is challenging enough for me because it's something I really don't enjoy doing that much but I like the results obviously same, same thing with organizing so it's almost like feels like accomplishment to do that because I like I'll put it on my list like to clean the fridge or something like that and then which is what I've done this week and then every time after when I open the fridge, it's like I have a clean fridge and it's really good feeling and it, it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess if I had a full-time job, I wouldn't feel the need to do things like that. But since um, I don't at the moment, that's, that's something nice I can do for us and have like a nice, cleaner, more organized space. So I kind of... I'm starting with the kitchen and we'll see how far I'll get. <laughs> I'm pretty slow because I don't have much time um, to get stuff done. So it took me a few days to clean the whole fridge. I just did it bit by bit, um, but I still did it. It's a little annoying when you can't get it all done in one time, but I mean, I think it's better than not doing it. So yeah, so that's that. Uh, and then the other thing is that I started growing some microgreens. So now it's like, really cold and you can't really grow anything here in uh, Toronto and uh, I've been thinking about microgreens for a while I saw some videos and uh, I just kind of tried it finally and it's really really cool um, it's a nice way to learn how to grow something uh, it's it grows inside so it doesn't require any like you have control over all the conditions you're not dependent on the weather or anything like that and it's it's a really great way to get some very nutritious food without too much effort like it takes more time obviously in the beginning when i'm learning things but i can see how within some short period of time it'll be much much easier and won't take as much time and will be more kind of streamlined and it's it's just great to have some greens um for cooking and there's like so much variety you can do micro greens out of so so many plants like i tried sunflower seeds which was really delicious and peas and arugula and right now I'm growing also some uh, uh, radish so it's really nice um, it's nice to put on a sandwich or in a soup like just a little bit of extra um, and yeah I really enjoy it. the kids like seeing it grow and eating it as well so yeah it's really nice uh, and then in this theme of gardening I also made my seed order for the seeds for everything I want to grow next year, what, what I don't have. Well, this year, I mean, in the spring. I'm really excited to get it. I've, I had a, a small balcony garden last year, but this year I want to really kind of make it more sort of efficient and like really have a plan so that I have enough um, greens and herbs so that we don't really need to buy any from like, I don't know, hopefully like let's say May, April, May, till like November, I guess the way CSAs usually go. So I really wanna have enough uh, so we don't need. And also I got some stuff like tomatoes and cucumbers, but those are kind of hard to grow on a balcony and definitely in a number good enough to feed us, um, like just from that. Uh, so that's just kind of for fun. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to kind of plan everything and um, get some more containers and organize everything and see how it goes. I usually really excited at the beginning and then towards the middle of the summer, I'm kind of tired of it and there's just so much going on. We spend so much time outside. I don't maintain it as well as I should, but hopefully this year will be a little bit different and it works better. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so that's all I have for you guys today. Um, I hope I didn't speak too fast. I'm just really scared that my camera will die in the middle because it will not die, but it said that there's only that much space um, for recording. Uh, and I'm really trying to fit in within that space. <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, spending the time with me. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Uh, I'm also, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry. Uh, I'm not super active on Instagram or Ravelry, <laughs> Ravelry but but I'll, maybe I'll try to be more active on Instagram. It's just, uh, social media is difficult. <laughs> so anyway, but you can always find me here. Um, and I hope to see you soon. I hope you have a great a few weeks and you just manage to do what you enjoy, at least for a little while. Mm -hmm. But hopefully for a lot. <laughs> Thanks.